Welcome in. This is 300 Yards to Unknown and the very first Thanksgiving extravaganza. I just made that up on the spot. So so, we'll have to come back for year two (laughs) next year. So our first annual Thanksgiving extravaganza, we will quickly recap the RSM. And then I've got some uh, interesting Thanksgiving related topics that we can talk through. We'll see what's going on with the match part three, but that's, that's the breakdown for today and joining me as he does. And I'm very thankful for him. It's Eric Patterson. Epat, what up my dude? Rick, I'm actually now that I think about it, I'm a little disappointed we didn't do this for Canadian Thanksgiving. I don't, I, I obviously American Thanksgiving <laughs> rules rules the uh, the sports world, but I'm I, I ate my turkey a month ago, and we never talked about what I was thankful for back then. Well, now here's your chance. Okay, so 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 Canadian Thanksgiving's what in October? Yeah, like second Monday of October, okay. early mid to October. Yeah. All right. So yes, this is your, your neighbors to the South, the American Thanksgiving. Uh, what's a, uh, I got a quite what, what's it like eating Turkey now? Do you do Turkey for Thanksgiving? Can I tell you, I hate Thanksgiving. Really? I hate it. Yeah. Well, what about it? <laughs> it is. Um, I, I like the food's fine, right? I don't think it's all that great. I'm, I think Turkey's fine. Uh, wow. Like I, I don't eat Turkey throughout the year. So it's not like I'm dying to have it. I don't know. I, I just, I'm not a big, it's okay. Thanksgiving's a lot about the sides. I'm not a big sides guy. Uh, so like, it's just, it's Jeez. I like, you're the like this year the Scrooge of Thanksgiving. <laughs> what do you do for, what do you do for Christmas or like the holidays? You have more Turkey then? Uh, no, like ham. Ham is kind of oh, more like ham Christmas-y. is more okay. Yeah. Okay, um, we do ham it for Easter, but okay, no, because I, I was wondering like, you guys do turkey here, and then in like another month, you do more turkey. It's just like, uh, how no, is, we're gonna do that's ham too then. much, yeah. We're gonna okay, do, so we're gonna you do divide it up a little bit, split it up. Okay, we, we split it up now. I will say, uh, d- deep frying the turkey, oh, that 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 could be a game changer. We've done a deep fried here up here before, and it's it's quite different. In, really good really good it, it increases your chances of burning your house down like 1000 times but uh if you do it safely it is uh, very delicious it's fun we did one we did the the deep fried and then just the regular roast and you got to like compare the difference and it was noticeably better in my opinion at least yeah and it, and but, it takes like a fraction of the time know, right yeah. yeah i mean instead of cooking it all day long you throw it in there for like i don't know 30 or 40 minutes something like that and it's damn now i'm, I'm wishing i had thanksgiving coming up because i could come I on could, to, if you I'm could a, travel we'd have you down <laughs> i'm a big fan of all i'm a big fan of all the turkey the sides and everything that goes along with it i love yeah. it yeah um all right let's do this real quick rsm classic and the only reason we really need to recap this because you eric patterson tout of the year Robert uh, Streb, Bobby Streb comes through. Tell me, wh- okay, you got this ticket during Thursday's round. When, when did this happen? I think it was Friday. Okay, I believe. And it was was it two hundred or two hundred and fifty to one? Two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy when you say it out loud, but yeah, it was. It's not like I'm. I'm not gonna say I knew right when I hit it. I was like, oh, Streb's got this in the bag. He was. He was like two or three under, just kind of lurking. He might have been playing. Maybe it was Thursday. He might have been playing. The, I think it was the, Thursday. I think it was Thursday. Whatever the nineteenth is, because uh, he was playing Seaside. I think day one, and he was playing pretty solid. I think he was riding a hot putter. But yeah, I, I'm definitely not going to say I, I knew this was coming before the tournament started. I just kind of got lucky and clicked it when I saw a good number. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, no such thing as got lucky. You. Uh... Well, I definitely got lucky. You see how the rest of the the, the week unfolded? It was. I did. I, uh... <laughs> Quite a bit of luck involved. Luck is what the intersection of preparation and. Well, there was I wasn't even on preparation. There was no <laughs> prep for Strep. There was no prep for for him. Uh, I just knew he won the tournament before. That was the only thing. How about that he shot he hit on the him. second playoff? Dude, I thought <laughs> there is uh, quite a. I honestly Sunday, for me at least, and a few of a few people joined in on the party there, and just like that Sunday was why golf betting i think is like by far the best the best you know sweat four day sweat going because of the everything builds up until sunday and then you hit sunday you've got a three-shot lead and then you ride this roller coaster of crazy emotions he's he's 
you know, scrambling for pars. He makes a couple birdies, then he gives them back, and then he three putts a par five. Like it was just ebbs and yep. flows. And then Kisner, all these guys were coming. It was just like the wildest ride for a RSM Classic Sunday. Like you don't even think no one's watching that event unless they have something riding <laughs> on the line. The approach that he hit, uh, so on, I guess it was 18 again, the second playoff hole that he almost holed out, that got a verbal exclamation from me. Yeah, uh, that was a rare gas from me as well. Yes, that was, uh, I, I, the only other times I can think about, like when Rom holed out greenside at Muirfield Village, and maybe when Morikawa and JT did that back-to-back thing. And then uh, and then Rom and DJ again, those putts in the... That, and then Tiger's ball on number two at Torrey Pines that went down on Sunday and pops back out. No, I do times. remember that. Those yeah. are the last times I yelled at the TV while watching golf. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put Streb in the caliber of player of those other, <laughs> no, other the shot three or four we've moment, named. In the that moment. was huge. That was a big. I going against Kisner. He was somehow he's zero five now in playoffs. It's been beat to a drum. But like, how is that possible? I'm surprised. Like Kisner had the look in his eye all afternoon that he was just coming. And I was yeah. worried. And then in the first playoff hold, Streber puts it in the bunker and barely got his second shot, like within 30 yards of the green. So I figured this was over because K- Kisner was had like a 15 footer for birdie, just guys yeah. automatic typically on the greens. I thought it was done. I had the headlines written. I was like, fine. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Streb, for a fun Sunday. But uh, yeah, the, the tides turned pretty quickly. And then Kisner's tee shot settled into like, I don't know if you were watching that closely, clumpy. but it was a very it, clumpy like, lie. It, it was one of those where the ball bounces, rolls up onto a piece of grass and then just settles down. And you yes. just, you see it, you, the commentators saw it. They're like, man, that thing is plugged. And that, and he didn't even, that would really didn't even matter because Streb just nail in the coffin. First that of all, huge. of course, of course, Kisner makes like a 25 footer for par, which is, still like, which is still like, okay. If you grab from like six inches away, shanks this little, just like, putt. yeah, drops his putter and makes an absolute fool of himself. Yeah. There was pretty, it's pretty gutsy from, from Kisner though. Cause he knew yeah. he needed to chip in and then still makes the par. But yeah, that was a, that was a fun, fun uh, RSM classic. It started off slow, but got, got better as the week went along. Obviously. Definitely did. All right. Thanksgiving extravaganza. I have a few topics. Uh, I almost said Christmas related Thanksgiving related that we can go through here. Uh, and these are intentionally open for interpretation. Okay. I don't want to put too many constraints on this. So we'll, we'll ease our way into this and it doesn't mean this year. It doesn't mean since the restart, just whatever you want to take this, the golfer that you are most thankful for Eric, who, who might make this short list for you? Uh, I think it's got, for me, it's got to be Tiger Hmm. start, you know, first guy you kind of idolize as a golfer. And then now he's in theory created a new crop of elite players. And I just think he's been, he's been golf since, you know, 1995. So without him, I I don't know where the sport is. The, the conversations that we always have about how deep golf is, uh, which is awesome for us now are 100% attributed to Tiger Woods. Right. All of these kids, they're now all grown up and they're playing professionally. They idolize them. They've, he's drawn in athletes, legit, like guys who could probably play other sports or maybe, you know, pursue college scholarships and other sports are now playing golf. So that it just, it does, uh, it's, he's breeded, he's bred an entire generation that we're seeing now. It's, yeah. It's, uh, he's definitely number one for me. He's, if you want to talk about just 2020, we can go different. <laughs> well, okay, so we can we can kind of go down different. <laughs> so I think I think Tiger's very clearly number one. Uh, I think more recently, uh, Rory, Rory for me, and I think Rory has at times taken the torch from Tiger. Right, and uh, the the decade of 2010s uh, was Rory's decade. And he won more than anybody else. He won a bunch of majors. Now we haven't seen him win a major in a while, but I also think that Rory has evolved off the course as well. So, so to me, Rory is now the de facto like players union spokesman. Yeah. He's like, I was going to say the spokesperson of golf. Yeah. And, and he speaks for the players. He seems to even offer uh, a lot more thoughts on a lot more topics these days uh, and, and that, that a lot of guys won't talk about. And I, I think that he is now 
he's like, yeah, I don't know what else to call it. Like, yeah, the, the, the leader or the spokesperson of the current crop of golfers on the PGA tour. And Oh, by the way, he's also very good at golf. <laughs> yeah, no, he was definitely one I thought about too. When you, when you sent me these questions. Um, but again, I will add another layer to this. I think being thankful is also, we watch golf to be entertained okay. and, Personally, I write a lot of content and there's no one more <laughs> Say it. who is the, the content king that is Bryson. Uh, I think without him in the last year, golf would be a lot more um, bland, dry. And I just, even if you don't agree with everything he does, you can appreciate the uh, added layer of entertainment that he offers and provides. Our professions are easier and better because of Bryson. Is that, yeah. is that fair to say? 100%. I probably wrote more headlines about Bryson. Maybe Tiger. Tiger and Bryson are definitely one, two for 2020. Because even, and because we talk about him a lot everywhere that I do stuff. And it's, but, but people, they want to talk about him. Either they want to talk about how much they love it or how much they hate him. And like, like it's, yeah, he's, he's certainly a big focus. I too am thankful for Bryson DeChambeau. Without him, like I'd have a lot more boring days and I think tournaments would be a lot less interesting. So, uh, just, you gotta, we watch to be entertained. We watch to, you know, it's, you gotta have someone to cheer for and cheer against and if you want to either side, you can be on either side of that and you can be uh, very thankful for his presence and his emergence. All right. Next step tournament. You are most thankful for now. This doesn't have to be a specific year i will uh, we, we're gonna need to do this where you know we can just crown masters we can just say that that that's number one or whatever but like i would like to talk about like non-major tournaments that you're most thankful for i'm gonna i'm gonna wave i think i'm gonna wave my patriotic flag here Ooh. i think i'm gonna go canadian open okay uh one of the few national opens the well, the only national open the PGA Tour runs uh, yep. in my backyard most of the time, one that I get to go to uh, frequently. If there was no COVID this year, I know I would have been covering it and been on the ground. So hopefully I can be there for 2021, I guess. So uh, yeah, the Canadian Open. And it's obviously not a major. Um, it's one of, those, one of those events that just keeps the, the PGA Tour uh, afloat and just like a nice, mm -hmm. it's a fun event. I don't know. It's a... Definitely the most important one to Canadians, I guess, other than the majors. It is part of the Triple Crown, right? That's what they call it when you win the U.S. Open, the Canadian Open, and the Open Championship. I believe they call that the Triple Crown. They've, yeah, I, I wrote that. I remember I put that in the headline or in like uh, maybe Rory was trying to do it or something because he, he had won the Canadian and, and uh, someone called me out. But there's there's some definitely some sketchiness about the, what the Triple Crown actually is because you can also make it the the Masters, the op U.S. Open, and the op British Open. So, but why would it be that? Why would you leave out the PGA Championship? Yeah, I don't know. I, if you want to look it up, there's it's there's been oh, a few I different see. things that are Triple saying. Crown, <laughs> but it, I, it's one of the oldest events. Like it, the Canadian Open, I think the Open Championship's the oldest, and then the U.S. Open, and then maybe the Canadian. There might be another one in there, the Western Open, or. All right, here you go. So there are different ways, thanks to Wikipedia, which this all has to Always be true. correct. Right, exactly. So there are a couple of different variations of the Triple Crown. So Ben Hogan, quote unquote, won the Triple Crown in 1953 by winning the Masters, the US Open, and the Open Championship. That's what you're referring to, which was touted as the Triple Crown. Now, the Triple Crown- I think Lee Trevino took down the- Keep going. Someone's won it. Maybe uh, older. So- well, okay. I don't, I don't have the full list of those. So I just have, I think maybe the first one that happened and Tiger did it. So Tiger did it and Ben Hogan have done it. Uh, okay. The, the triple crown has also been referred to the three oldest events in the same year, which are the open championship, the U S open and the Canadian open. That's what I was referring to. Uh, Lee Trevino won that in 1971 and Tiger Woods won it in 2000. So Tiger there Woods in 2001, both triple crowns, however you want to define them. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Canadian Open. The first time I saw Tiger was at the Canadian Open. Very thankful for that. South Africa has a triple crown, winning the three major domestic championships in the same year, the South African Open, the South African Masters, and the South African PGA Championship. Of course, the only people who have done that, would you like to take a wild guess? There's two of them. I have it open here. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gary Player and Ernie Els are the two answers. Fitting. 
<laughs> and then Australia has won uh, the Australian Open, the Australian Masters, and the Australian PGA Championship, in which Robert Allenby did in 2005. So there you go. Triple I crown. feel like golf needs a like a more defined triple crown. Like horse racing well, has it. We always think of horse racing triple crown, but like no one talks about. We need like not one with the majors because we everyone wants the Grand Slam, but we need a triple crown of major or of like other tournaments. I don't even know how you'd do it or what ones they would be. I was in a one and done that uh, one of the segments was just t- tournaments that had open at the end of it, uh, which there was like eleven of them. So that's obviously too many. But I wonder if there was a way like. The, the caps lock triple crown or well that was with the pga tour i was thinking like the invitational you could do like uh mm. bay hill genesis there's got to be another invitational in there somewhere or or do it like baseball where the triple crown is just stat related you win Ooh. these three categories i don't know what they would be strokes gained money uh, list money list and scoring average there you go triple crown because you, you don't have to scoring average and strokes gained would be different a lot of times they'd be close but they could web web won the scoring average this year but i don't think he led in strokes gain total i don't think or, he did either yeah well there you maybe we have to do a stat related one all right i'll have to go That'd check that out and see if anybody's won it um tournament i'm most thankful for so i narrowed this down to a couple uh the match play i love the match play i think it is the the purest form of golf it gives you one-on-one and it's got a bracket and now it's great. So I'm, I'm all in on the match play and then uh, never more. And I don't think I felt this way probably last year, but never more in COVID times uh, do I miss the waste management. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, because, and, and I think like, if you would ask me that like two years ago, I'd be like, Oh, it's like rowdy frat guys. And like, it's not really my scene and blah, blah, blah. Now I'm like, Holy crap. Wouldn't that be cool to have in February? Yeah. And it's like, it's just so unique and so different and people actually like, and now the field, the fields are always getting stronger. I just, yeah, it's a good, it's a definitely a, a tournament you circle on the, uh, on the calendar. How about this one for the next topic? This is intentionally vague. Biggest Turkey. Who is the <laughs> I, biggest? I saw this. <laughs> Who is I don't the... even know what the Turkey, like, All right, so... oh, I know I have an answer. Okay, go ahead. It's get again. It's Bryson. Yeah, it's Bryson, right? Yeah, yeah I think it might be a layup when you think you can think of it two ways too. Is it he's the meatiest? So, <laughs> so if you you're getting to, the most bang for your buck, if you had to eat somebody on tour, <laughs> Billy up the most, and then he's just the definition of a turkey, just kind of like a goof, and he is he is that through and through. Yeah. So, and I guess, I guess the, this, the other guy that I was thinking uh, also kind of fits, but all of that would be like Harry Higgs, right? Harry Higgs kind of hams it up a little bit. He's like a fun loving guy. He's bigger. You could eat, you know, you could munch on <laughs> Harry eat? Higgs. Well, this is taking a dark path too. <laughs> Which PGA tour pro would you want to eat? Uh, no. yeah, yeah. Bryson's definitely my Turkey, but I thought then you could also do it as like uh, not Turkey, but you could look at it as like a letdown. Like who it comes mm. up? Uh, I don't so know. That, when I think of Turkey, I I don't always think of like uh, just like a a goof, but maybe more like uh, yeah, so, someone so who like just Tony came up Fina. short. Yeah, like or like Tommy Fina Fleetwood. or or Spieth. Oh, Spieth. Yeah, man. But now that now that's just that's just kind of sad. I, I'd rather <laughs> keep it the, the turkey as definitely Bryson. <laughs> yeah, I think it is Made definitely Bryson as well. Uh, whose Thanksgiving would you want to be invited to? This is interesting. I could go a lot of different ways with this. Like, like um, first name that I like, I thought, um, and I don't even know if he celebrates Thanksgiving or whatever. Like Terrell Hatton, I feel like would be a blast. Yeah, do, do English people? I don't think they celebrate. It. <laughs> eh, maybe he's living. I don't know where he's at. You know, maybe he comes over here, or whatever. But like, I think he would be an absolute blast. That's a good one. Yeah, you got to have one where I, I would go Pat Perez. Mm. I think his Thanksgiving is probably just out of control. So Does it want, up you nice? Want like a good you, time, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a fun party to attend, right? <laughs> it's got. Yeah, I mean, it's like. I'm, I'm like I'm, there's obviously a couple layups here as well. All right, who, who, who's, who's would you least want to go to? <laughs> oh no, Reeds. I know. I can't. I want to. I want to see that family dynamic. Yeah, you could be. What if you were seated between Patrick and Justine? That would be. Uh, that would be some good stuff. I, I just want to be a fly in the wall at Reeds Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Um. Who would I least want to go to? Like, uh, I need like a player list. 
Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm just looking head. at the official world golf rankings right now. That's why I'm doing this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe like, like uh, he, just someone like so vanilla, who's like the most pl- bland guy on tour. So I but... think I think Cantlay's much better off the course than he is on. Yeah, the course. he might he might let loose. He gets yeah. some my ties going. Yeah. Uh, oh, you got to go way down to find someone bad. Like uh, Brian, what do you think Brian Harmon's Thanksgiving celebrations are like? Like, do you want to go? No, <laughs> no, see. I don't think so. <laughs> no offense to be honest. not in my not in my age range. Probably have nothing in common with Brian Harmon. Yeah, I don't have anything to say. At like, least like there's some young guys you can might be able to like dog. I just I'm on the uh, official world golf rankings as well. So like. Yeah. Doc Revman, my around my age, so that might be all right. Yeah, he'd be cool. Yeah, Doc, yeah I think uh, Harmon might top that list. He might. He might also have a massive party. He might. Uh, he might under the radar throw a great Thanksgiving Day party. But just, I love it. Maybe Jim Herman. Jim Herman, one hundred two in the world. The Hermanator. The Hermanator. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd go to his Thanksgiving. Right? But I would. I would say if uh, I would want to go to, I just want to see Tiger's house. So if he's if he's throwing one, I'll if he's having it at his place, yeah, I'll be there. Let me see all the. I want to see all the trophies. I want to see the simulator room. I want to see what else you got going on over there, Tiger. And um, Phil, I feel like Phil would just talk the entire night. Oh my God, Phil! Phil would be really good, actually. Yeah, that's. I, yeah, you need storytellers too. Yeah, they always say Phil holds court at what Masters Champions dinner. Yeah, uh, that would be. That would be fun. You you'd hear some stuff. You get great stories. That Phil would be really strong. Yeah, I think yeah. But if you if you had to go one lesser tier, I think Patty Perez would be the, my guy. That's a good one. That'd uh, be who, fun. Who would who would sit at the kids table? Now is this? I saw that. I, <laughs> is this like at at that party or just like on the if the PGA Tour had a Thanksgiving? Yeah, if the PGA Tour has a Thanksgiving. Who sits at the kids table? <laughs> I don't even know who sits at the kids table, the youngest players. Well, no, I would say like Bubba, like I would say, you know, guys who are like, uh, Bubba might, might shed a few tears that he's not invited to the big table. You know, like guys that are like, you know, like, like Billy Horschel, Billy Horschel, Bubba Watson, like chitty, chitty chatty guys that are like fun loving and like, I don't know, late more laid back, not taking everything as seriously. That's, oh, that's you're saying I like, like not the prim and proper group. Yeah, right. Or, or just the like, ones yeah. who might not have all the table manners down. Yeah, right. They might say something a little controversial. They might stir the pot a little bit. They might, you know, <laughs> poke, poke the cousin next to them. You know, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Stuff like that. Oh, man. <laughs> Who's the biggest Joe? Harold Varner? He seems like a goofball. Well, he, he, would, bring, probably... he would bring his uh, talking head cover. Yeah, so... there you go. Yeah, I don't know what is that. Uh... Bubba has one of those too. <laughs> it's all, all the guys with the uh, <gasps> animals head covers that just bring him to the kids' table. Poulter? Like, I put Poulter at the kids' table. He seems like a kind of a quirky guy, fun guy. Oh, yeah, that's the way that I took this. I thought I thought you just wanted to like all right name the youngest guys on oh, tour. That's Wolf, easy. Wolf Matt Wolf actually would be at the kids table. Though. That he, he fits, is a chatterbox. He both yes, chatterbox. Yeah, he probably throws food word. still. He might huck a potato. Perfect yeah. word, chatterbox. Um, by the way, Matthew Wolf about to go up 113 spots on the official World Golf rankings this year. That's kind of crazy. Is that what he leaped? Yeah, well, he was at 117. Now he's 14. So that'll it'll change maybe a little bit the last couple of weeks, but. That's um, we'll do it. We'll do a year in review at some point. I mean, you want to cruise down. I think the biggest jump is uh, Todd? Mackenzie Hughes, 264. Ooh. Oh, Will Zalatoris, 672 spots. Todd's big move was last year, I guess. Or no, was that this year? I guess some of it was in 2019. Though now Todd we're just was. breaking down the official rule. <laughs> uh, all right, last one thing you're most thankful for. It doesn't have to be golf related, doesn't have to so be sappy anything you know we i would just say that i get to actually it still doesn't it sounds weird to say but i get to cover golf as a profession mind-blowing and i have the support from my wife and family members that to be able to do this yeah that's crazy. because i i had i don't know if a lot of people know this but i'll just quick background i do i was heading down a full engineering career and made the switch like two years ago so i had So my schooling is in, that's what I, (laughs) like all of my jobs before this lined up to have a full career in engineering. And I said, this is not for me. 
and said, decided wanna, to watch golf, golf instead. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hard decision, but one I had to make. Yeah. I think, I think that's very fair. Very similar. I mean, we are, we, we joke around, but we are lucky to do this for a living. Um, we're, we're lucky that golf is the kind of sport that it is. Right. I mean, I could not have imagined a situation in which, uh, all sports stopped and basically the world shut down. Right. Like I, I could not have imagined any situation that that could have happened. Uh, and, and for golf to at least be in a, in a place where it could come back, it could come back safely. Like it's that the amount of stress and, uh, all of the things that people are feeling about their jobs, you know, we felt for a couple months, but we were able to get back to it a lot quicker than others were, which was obviously huge because yeah, the, uh, sports media landscape is, uh, it's, you're walking on thin ice to begin with, yeah. let alone when sports just hit pause for three months. And luckily at the score, we haven't laid off a single person because of this pandemic, which wow. is, I think, very rare. I know a lot of companies, ESPN has, and I've heard like up here, at least uh, Sportsnet, which is one of the bigger, it's run by Rogers who own the Blue Jays. Like the, they're about to have more layoffs. So it's like, there's layoffs going all over the place in the sports world and like golf channel too. They're, they yeah. cut back drastically. So um, to be able to do this still is uh, yeah, a blessing for sure. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy stuff. Uh, it is Thanksgiving week. And while there is no PGA tour golf, Eric, there is golf to be played. Phil Mickelson will tee it up with his partner, Charles Barkley, and they will take on Steph Curry, and Peyton Manning in the third edition of the match. You excited for this? Not overly. <laughs> I, I will be once it's here. I think I, I once I throw the mics on these guys and I mean, just having no tiger is actually such a game changer. It's wild. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There's, I don't know who I'm most excited to see Charles Barkley. I've, I've kind of seen Steph Curry play. I know what Phil's all about and I know what Manning brings to the table too. So I guess it is how bad is Charles Barkley is pretty much what the question is. Uh, the current odds, and I want to get these right. I saw them earlier today, but I'm going to make sure in case anybody put a big bet out there. Okay, so here we go. Phil Mickelson and Charles Barkley are the underdogs, plus 138. Peyton Manning, Steph Curry, your favorites, minus 175. I... About two weeks ago, was like, oh my God, Peyton and Steph are going to just absolutely dominate this event. And I'm actually starting to think that the dog side of this is the side to be on. And I have two, I have two main reasons for this, Eric. I, I need to know your reasons okay. because you know the format, right? Uh, modified alternate shot. Okay. So I, I think when they first came out, no one really knew the format. So it was like, oh, so Phil has better ball with Charles Barkley. He might be <laughs> able to compete. Now with modified alternate shot, I think changes a lot. Here are the two things that I can't shake from my mind um, that I think the public will not know correct, will not be smart about. So here's the number one is Peyton Manning, Steph Curry are very good at golf. Uh, Phil Mickelson is head and shoulders, leaps and bounds, not even in the same universe better than they are. That's completely agree. That's part one because, and, and people are gonna be like, well, Steph's a scratch golfer and Manning's like a three, which sure they might be, but it feels like a feels plus like four. a plus five. <laughs> yeah. Plus five. And that is like huge, 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 huge difference. Um, and then here's the other thing. <laughs> this, this one might burn me. Charles Barkley. I don't think is as bad at bad at golf as people remember or want to believe that he is uh, that is, that hitch swing that he had for the last decade, that's gone. He does not have that swing anymore. Um, he he played one hole with Justin Thomas at the match two. Made a yeah, dunk. that's what I'm actually go looking that up right now. What happened in that hole? So I, I actually, in a video that's going to, actually might be out right now. I scheduled it. I broke this down on the Rick Rungo. You broke YouTube it down. Channel. Oh, no. Uh, so so uh, he kind of tops it a little bit, yanks it off to the left, but he's in the fairway. His layup was pretty good his third shot he hits the green and then he three putts oh my you said his drive was pretty good i just watched it he hit the hosel he's like 50 he's like 60 years old i'm he's not like that's nervous 
So he, he did this in a, in a with no one watching, not even it's just one hole, and he barely hit the club face with a driver. But was okay. Watch his second shot. Was it better than you thought it was going to be? He doesn't have the hitch. I'll give you that. Now Thank I'm just you. watching Charles Barkley. Okay, second shot. I I just think modified alternate shot changes so much, and Charles Barkley being like a even if he's like a 15 handicap. Like so, you, you have to, he has to play so many shots. I think strategy is going to come a big into play. Like if, if Charles Barkley, do, you don't want Charles hitting your second shot every single I time. think you have to know the course too. Like, is it, oh, are there drivable par, are there drivable par fours? Like Phil might hit one three thirty on up and around the green and just, True. you need a chip. Yeah. I don't like, know. All right. Here's thing. Barkley's second shot. Yeah, go ahead. So he lays up. Here. All right. He hits that one kind of pure. Okay. Now go watch his wedge into the green. <laughs> I don't know what that shot was. He, it's a, it's a, is this a par five? Am I watching no, it's a, par a par? It's a par four. Okay. So we, what he laid up with a wedge. <laughs> he laid up with some type of iron. I think, I think you're, I think, uh, okay. I think Bar- Barkley's going to be a lot worse than you. He, think. Here's the other thing to keep in mind. Uh, I went back and watched the match too. And Phil Mickelson spent the entire time talking Tom Brady through every single shot, read all of his putts for him, told him where to hit it. That is worth multiple shots around. Peyton and Steph Curry do not have that advantage. They're not going to be able to do that to each other. Phil is like next level. Phil will carry Charles on his shoulders. Do you think, do you think Charles Barkley has a massive hitch in his swing, needs more thoughts, needs more <laughs> thinking? I don't, I think, I think he needs, uh, you know, as blank of a mind as you can have. I don't know if he needs Phil in his ear telling him exactly how to hit a shot because I don't believe he thinks he can pull that off. So, on the other side, by the way, I I, I don't think I ever told you this. When we did this was a couple weeks ago when we did make a case for and against ex golfer. Do you remember we did that? Not really. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote the article. That yeah, was I like wildly popular. I got really? like a lot of comments about that. Like you should do this all the time. So we might we might want to. Well. Uh, get- my my thought behind the article was the fact that no one talks about why someone can't win. Mm-hmm. Like it's always, you know, I why I, li- I like this guy because of this. I like the, yeah. this guy because of that. And didn't that we good. struggle to come up with one for DJ? I'm almost certain we did. Yeah, we said. Um, There's nothing wrong with. <laughs> yeah, the only question mark was his health after COVID, and he came out and played. He, he came second at the Houston Open. He so yeah, there was no issues. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a that was very well received. Okay, so my case for why Charles Barkley and Mickelson won't win is because <laughs> Charles Barkley has to hit too many shots. Yeah. If it was Steph and Peyton versus Phil, that's mm-hmm. probably a more fair match. But Barkley having to either hit a second shot or a, that. using his tee ball. I think, unfortunately, he's going to have to not only hit too many shots, he's going to have to hit too many second shots. Which is if he, Yeah, if he, they might win like the par threes if Phil puts them some close. The it's okay. Now I'm kind of getting a little more excited about watching the the other side of this. Uh, I'm pretty sure Steph Curry's the best athlete we've seen in one of like he's he's pretty good, dude. I was, I mean, he went and he beat a guy on the corn fairy tour, yeah. And he actually, so he's he's played that Ellie May classic, I think he's played it twice. Uh, he's missed the cut both years, obviously, but he like one one year shot like 71, which was like one over, followed it up with like a decent, yeah, he was like 80, 86. Oh, was it okay, but then. His, then the next year, I think he's he been in the seventies a few times, yes. which is still impressive, which is better than like Tony Romo does when he comes out and plays. C- correct. Punta Cana or whatever he plays. In, and he yeah. is fairly long. The swing looks good, dude. And, and it's one of those, you know, he, he's just not as good. Uh, he's obviously not a professional, like on and around the greens. Like he's good. He's way better than I am. He's like real solid. But yeah. Yeah. See... It shows it there. Right. When you're, when you're pitching and these pros knock it dead. Uh, most of the time and he leaves himself with five feet and like, he's going to roll a lot of five footers in, but like that adds up over time. I just think they have such an advantage, even though Mickelson is a, you know, he's the only pro who actually plays is I just think they have such an advantage off the tee because I don't think Barkley is going to do much off the tee ever. Unless he's like hit it. Unless it's like, again, like a 330 yard par four and then, and Phil just says, please just hit like a six iron and I'll hit my, you know, just get in the fairway. That's the only only time. What if I think they uh, have an advantage? What if uh, Chuck has been grinding on the range for the last five months, getting ready for this match? He's ready to rock and roll. I mean, those two, 
Mickelson and Barkley are pretty known, like pretty big time known gamblers. So I'm sure they're putting money on themselves if they see plus money odds. So oh, wait, geez. wait for like the, you know, wait for like the uh, late night Thursday night, a five hundred thousand dollar bet uh-huh. just came in on Mickelson to win. Like that's gonna be Phil or Charles doing uh, that. I'm pretty sure Charles guaranteed the win on this. <laughs> so I already he, saw that. Did yeah. you see that? <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, see how this goes. I'm. I have. God. It's gonna be. It's gonna be interesting. I guess it's gonna be interesting to just see the different skill sets, like the 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 difference between Mickelson and and Steph and then Manning and then Barkley. It's gonna be fun. I'm I'm actually getting a lot more excited about it as as we get closer. It's the day after Thanksgiving. I'll just be sitting on the couch, making a dent in it, watching golf. That that works for me. There's some. I wish there were some more props available, but it's all like. I think they will be. Will Will they card a, a hole in one? Like they keep asking hole in one props. So like I don't. Because it's free money for books. It's free money. Anybody will Peyton Manning hole out from a hundred yards or more? It's like no, no. Of course you won't. Um, I think there will be more props. Actually, there. Yeah, is, they will uh, be. I lied because Friday I'm actually going on, I'm going on HQ, I think, to break this down. So there better be wow. props available for this at some point. Yeah, start grinding some more film. I'm ready, dude. I've been grinding film. I told there's a preview that is either out on rickrungood.com right now or is like gonna be released shortly. Uh that I I was grinding film on this. It was fun. I'm actually worried I won't be able to watch it in Canada because it's a TNT broadcast, right? Oh yeah, it's uh yeah, Turner. You guys get screwed on that, don't you? Well, we had to, we had it for the Tiger Phil match, the, the number two. Yeah. We, it was on like a business channel up here in Canada. So I got to go find that again. Uh, worst case scenario, I'll stream it from my phone for you. We'll, just, we'll track we'll it down. Up in front. All righty, Pat. What else? Anything we need to chat, a chat about? Just quickly, I think yeah. it's probably been, it's news for a while, but Tiger playing with Charlie in the PNC father yeah. son challenge. That's no longer called that, but pretty cool. What's it called? What's it called? I think it's just called the PNC challenge. There's no oh, father son because right, like because it, you it's be... Sorenstam plays it's yeah, their right. dad or something. Yeah. Um, it's uh I'm why do you think Tiger's doing this now? That was my question. I I saw the news, I'm like, why now? What what's the why? Um is I he would... going out is it is is uh the pessimist in me thinking like you know he doesn't have much time left to play with Charlie in a tournament? I don't know why he's doing this now. It's a good question. I haven't thought. I hadn't thought about that. Um, I don't. Why not wait until he's fourteen, like like uh, John Daly's kid? Or... Is this this is this like the the closest they'll be to overlapping? And like you know, if Tiger's like, I only got like a year left. Let's that's, do it now. Honestly, that's where my mind went when I saw the news. Hmm. I didn't even consider that. I don't know. I thought it was interesting because. Yeah, I mean Charlie's young, and I and I was like, is he trying to get like like I don't know what like is this for Tiger's Charlie? been is hiding like, Charlie. Yeah. Right. He's been hiding Charlie for years. Yeah. And like when that first video came out of his swing, like people were like, yo, we're invading his privacy. Like, yep. this is creepy. Obviously, Tiger doesn't want him to be filmed because it was through a bush. And now he's putting him on Golf Channel for two days straight. I don't know. I it seems like that. a drastic <laughs> turnaround. Uh, you're not wrong. You're definitely not wrong. I mean, think about I've seen like one swing on Instagram of Charlie's and that's probably for a reason. So, yeah, I he's he's kept both his kids away from cameras spotlight for as much like that emotion they at on at the end of the last masters is like the first time people have seen Charlie in like years. It just, it's, I find it. I asked the question as to why now that's a pretty good question. I don't have an JT's answer. JT's playing too. Yeah. With I don't his know. Dad. Yeah. Like maybe there's some heavy sponsor dollars getting dumped into them or hmm. maybe it's just a financial thing. I They're don't know. Start rocking PNC on the shirt at some point. <laughs> like Charlie was just given I, he doesn't need anything more yeah, but like right? i'm excited to see i just want to see tiger the father like it's gonna be it's something we don't see yeah it'll be it'll be cool regardless but i did not even think about that now that'll keep me up tonight so thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> hey we're here to ask the tough questions but people are gonna be i'm just worried people are gonna be like breaking down charlie woods's game one thousand percent yeah and that's if this is the only time i see charlie play golf and Maybe he sees he plays in a tournament with cameras and says, "Dad, I hate this. I don't want to do it again." Like that's fine. Yep. Like he, he people are going to be like critiquing it though, which is it, that's too far. It um, I I likened it to when like USC or some college offers like a twelve year old a scholarship, and I'm like, oh, 
this is feels kind of dirty, but also like, I guess that they think like, like they have to do this or whatever. I don't know, but it's like, it's like weird. And I feel weird about it. I think I'm going to feel weird about this too. I feel. Yeah. They like, <laughs> up, it's, it's hard to, cause golf is such like a private sport. They don't go to like, you don't go in Canada. At least you hear of like young junior hockey players, like minor hockey players. You're like, Oh, this is the next best kid. People actually go and watch, you know, uh, a 12 year old play hockey because he's about to go to the, take the next step. But as like a golfer, you don't go to junior golf tournaments and watch 10 year olds play. It's like, it's a very private thing. And usually they're playing with like their parents. So it's like, I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch. I just want to see Tiger have fun with his kid, but again, why now? Yeah. Twitter golf Twitter is going to be weird uh, over those. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see like what direction people go on golf Twitter. Like, do they go down to like, yeah, there's going to be a different, a couple different avenues you can take. And there's going to be a few creepy ones for sure. Well, we will not be the creepy ones, or at least we'll try our best not to. Uh, Eric, thank you very much as usual. First annual Thanksgiving extravaganza in the books. See you next year. I hope Brian Harmon doesn't listen to this and like get rattled. <laughs> I hope that he does. <laughs> Hi, Brian, if you're listening to this, I'll, we'll, we'll get together for Thanksgiving. Let's see how it is, buddy. Um, that would be great. Eric, uh, you can find his work at The Score. You can follow him on Twitter at epatgolf. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been 300 Yards to Unknown, and we'll catch you next time.